What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hey Monster Hobbies, Model Car Garage Mechanics, welcome back to another great unboxing video for 1994. Today, me and Danny the dog are going to show you what's inside this amazing AMT Ertl 1994 Ford F-150 Lightning. Now this is one of those great model truck kits that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So without further ado, come and join me and Danny down on the bench as we pull the lid off this amazing model kit. Now we go back and visit our Ford dealership for 1994 as we check out this amazing AMT Ertl F100 Lightning. This is a skill level 2 kit molded in 125th scale for ages 10 and up. On this side of the box we get all these amazing specs for this really radical truck. And on this side of the box we get excellent photographs of the real truck. Here's the rear three quarters, the wonderful 240 horsepower V8 engine, the detailed interior and the styled wheels. So now let's take the lid off our Ford Lightning and see what's inside. Right away we get not one, but two instruction sheets in English and French. It says I bought this at Costco in a two-pack for $13.99, January 30th, 1996. So I've had this in the collection a very long time. Here's the decal sheet. Danny the dog can take a look at that with our instructions. We also get a blue printer ad from a long time ago. Here's our body and our uh, cab there. And then there's the bottom. Here we've got our clear puck components. And then we've got more of the gray parts trees. Tires in there, chrome, more gray, and some red tail lamps. Hello once again everybody, this is Danny the dog, your dog on the street. And now we're going to be looking at our Ford F-150 instruction sheets. So I just need a little assistance with a pointer and then we'll get into our dub over mic. Um, so here we can see a wonderful three quarter illustrated view of our Ford F-150 Lightning. And then down here we have the specs of the truck, which are really cool. And then in this section we have the important read this before you begin, as well as the tools we're going to need for our model. And we've got building it tips for the advanced modeler right down there. We begin this model right away with the engine assembly. And this is an amazing 351 Ford Super Block that was designed just for this truck. So here we see our engine and our transmission, which looks to be an automatic actually. This is molded as one piece. And they got both left and right hand side engine block. Then you got your cylinder heads, your water pump, your oil pan, and your oil filter. Our second step is to glue on our valve covers, the harmonic balancer in the front, and our starter motor to the side. Step C shows our fan and our serpentine belt pulleys, our alternator, our air pump, and the power steering air conditioner unit all being sandwiched together. Then down here we have our intake plenum, our distributor, and the intake manifold. Panel E is our final engine assembly, and here we have our intake manifold being dropped to the top of the block. We've got our steel exhaust manifolds going onto the side of the engine block. We have a two-piece crossover pipe which will glue onto the bottoms of the exhaust manifolds. And then our entire fan belt assembly will glue to the front of the engine block. Now here we get into our wheel assembly, and it shows to paint the hub semi-gloss black and then to dull coat the wheels for that aluminum look. That goes into the tire, then we've got our wheel retainer and our wheel back, which all go together, and you do that four times. And here we've got our interior. This is a really cool one for all you kids of the 90s. So we've got our steering wheel going into our dashboard here, an optional cellular phone which glues on. Wow, a cell phone in 94. I, uh, I forgot how old these things are. Okay, then you got your bucket seats being popped into the interior tub and our center console being popped in as well. So here we get some chassis sub-assemblies. So right there is a two-piece fuel tank, which is really cool. And then we have our left and right front axle coil springs. So they're like one half and the other half, so you glue that together. And then we've got our spare tire. And if I just slide this down a little bit, can hear it dragging on that back wall. There's our rear suspension. 
So here you've got the one half a dif differential with the springs molded in place. Then the top of the differential drops down and then there's a cover in the back. The subassembly for panel five shows our fuel tank being dropped onto the chassis. And then we've got our catalytic converter going in place as well as our muffler and tailpipes. There's the spare tire bracket. The spare tire gets glued on first, of course. And then we've got our cross member and our engine comes up from the bottom. Now subassembly B shows the front coil springs being glued into place and then we add on our radius arms onto the back and our tie rod up to the front. All of this mounts down on the chassis. And here's the final assembly for our chassis. So you put on your rear axle differential and your drive shaft which hooks up to the back of the transmission and then your shock absorbers. In panel 6 we begin our cab assembly with the firewall, so there it is. Our air conditioning accumulator will glue on here, just where the heater is. And then our master cylinder will glue into the brake booster. Now panel B shows our final cab assembly. It says, refer to panel number 10, painting, decal application for painting information. Okay, I'll do that. So here we drop our firewall into the back. We put our radiator in the front, up on the back side of that radiator wall. Then we can put in our window and our rear view mirror and then we hook in our interior tub into the body and there's some little pegs and holes and that'll all snap into place. So now in panel 7 we're just going to go a little long way, you know. So here we've got our tailgate and there's a lightning decal which goes on there. And then we can see in the final box assembly our tailgate will go in here and then the taillights hook onto the sides of the box. And then we've got this special rear bumper which goes into the holes back here. And then we've got our license plate decal which will go into the bumper. Now in panel 8 we can see our cab chassis assembly. So now our box hooks into the back of the cab. There's a couple of little, uh, little holes in there. Trevor will show you when we look at the plastic parts. And then we've got our side view mirrors and our wheels will go onto those axle pins. Remember just use a little smint in here. Try not to get any on the wheel backs. But you can see that the uh, wheels are a little bit directional, so as it's rolling forward, these are sort of scooping in, in that direction. They're not windmilling backwards. Okay, anyway, there's the front bumper going on, and our grill, and then our headlights go into the grill. And now panel 9, we get into the final assembly. You know, there's so many finals in this instruction sheet. <laughs> anyway, there's our fluid reservoir that goes in here. Our air intake, which will go right in there. And then our radiator hose, which go on top of the engine in a little hole and into the radiator. In subassembly B, we get some more underhood items, like our battery being glued on this side of the truck. And then the air intake, which hooks onto the edge of the plenum and goes off to the side of the truck. And we've also got another air intake duct, which will go right into here. Finally, we get our decal application, and there's really only just one. The lightning decal goes here. So it says here, note, Ford F-150 Lightning is available in three colors. Bright red. Ooh, we could use that bear paint Trevor reviewed a while ago. Black or white. Your local auto parts dealer, body shop, or Ford dealer may provide assistance in matching paints to factory specifications. Or, in these days, you could check it on the web. So here we have the body and cab for our Ford F-150 Lightning. And as you can see, it does hook together decently well. Now this is a bit crooked because of course, uh, this has been sitting in the box for a while. So how this hooks together is you can see these little plastic hooks on the box. And then in the cab here, we've got these slots and they're sort of designed so that the hooks will hook in and hold on. As you can see on the body, there's a lot of these little openings that is for the interior to also hook in. So now that I have this apart, let's just take a look at our cab. So here you can see the detail is really excellent on here. It says Ford F-150 and here, let's bring this up a little more. You can see the lettering underneath. Look at that side molding, the door latch, the lock, the door handle. And then up here on our cowl, we got that vent with the windshield wipers. Under the hood looks pretty good. Then there's also little special holes to lock in the hood and whatnot. The front is pretty plain, but that's all up on the grill. But then in the back, we've got that nice ribbed section, which unfortunately is really hidden from the uh, 
box, but that's okay because we know it's there. Underneath some old marks up in the corners, which will have to be cleaned up just to make sure that everything fits nicely on the cab. Okay, now looking at the truck bed, again, you can see the wonderful uh, texture inside here. It's got all the little holes in there that are supposed to be there. Uh, the back end has little holes for the bumpers and everything to hook up. Underneath, quite smooth. So where's the mold marks? I don't see any. That's good. <laughs> now here we've got two fuel doors. So that was one of those things where you could add extra gas into this, which in the 90s was good. But, you know, with gas prices today, they're horrible. Although, you know what? I'm finding that the gas prices are actually dropping so that's a good thing. Okay, so here's how the bed hooks in. Let's just, let, let's do the operation. So there it is. And then we put the hooks into the bottom, swing the bed in a little bit, and then you would push down. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to lock this thing in permanently. So that's how the body would all go together once you're ready with the paint. And here we have our chassis for our Ford F-150 Lightning. And again, look at how wonderful this is. So here's the rear gas tank. And the one on the side, the long one would glue into here somewhere. So that would be an auxiliary tank. And then look at all that nice detail. How many of you have actually owned a Ford F-150 Lightning or even just a 90s Ford F-150? Let us know in the comment section below just how much you liked it. How do you enjoy it? Is it a fun truck? Also, have you built this model or any one of its sister variants in the past? Now, I have built the regular Ford F-150, and I'll tell you, I'll testify that this one goes together really, really well. So here, there's a little piece you got to remove, but you can do that again with your little clippers and the hobby file just to get rid of the bumps that are on there from the parts tree. On this parts tree, we have our wonderful hood, our tailgate, our steering wheel with the airbag, as well as the dashboard and that top air intake and our interior bucket. So let's bring this up to the camera. First, I'm going to show you this dashboard. Look at how wonderful that is. Look at all the detail on there, the air conditioning unit and everything. This looks like the real thing, only smaller. And look on the top too. How many people put their road maps or their Big Macs in there? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. There's that Ford steering wheel. Look at the tailgate. Look at the hood. Look at that. Okay, look at the interior. Look at how nicely these side panels are molded for a tub. That's excellent. Even the pedals look correct. It's got the automatic in there and the little parking brake pedal. The only thing is it's got the angles at the bottom, but I mean, it's molded in place. So, you know, you can't have that free hanging. Okay, there's mold marks in the four corners, but again, I'm sure you could just scrape that down easily with that number 16 hobby blade. Look at the back of the tailgate. Look at all the detail in there. And then under our hood, we've got the bracing and the fireproof mat, although this is smooth under here. So I guess there is no mat in there. And again, on the back of the intake, we also have the little ribs on there. So again, a very, very nice parts tree indeed. Now here we have underhood details as well as the fuel tanks and the braces and our nice Ford 351. Again, really excellent. Oh, it looks like on my cell phone that the cord is broken. <laughs> so, well, what can you do? Okay, it's from the 90s. Now, anyway, all right, so look at that. Look at that nice firewall there with all its details, the heater motor and everything. This looks so accurate. Again, look at the uh, fan with the radiator, or the radiator with the fan shield, is what I'm trying to say. There's our battery and all these other details. But again, that is nice, crisp molding. I think this truck was actually built by the same crew that made like the 62 uh, Ford Thunderbird and the Oldsmobile model and all of that kind of stuff because again look at how clean and crisp that is. So this must have come out at that time when AMT was competing with Tamiya and Monogram and all those others in the who can build the best model contest they were having. Now that contest wasn't really like you know who's got the nicest model kit. It was actually a factory sort of 
you know, secret contest thing just to make the best product on the market, really, from uh, AMT. So again, there's the top of that intake plenum for our engine. Look at the seats. They look like you could actually sit on those and be comfortable. And then there's our center console looking like the real truck one with your uh, mugs being held into the holders. And then there's the rear bumper, the tube style, and our front enduro type bumper, the impact bumper, I guess, the plastic one. Look at all the detail for underneath. Again, really cool stuff. Now if I just turn this over, there are couple of little slight mold marks but again you can get rid of those just to dress this thing up so again you get a really wonderful parts tree from amt next up we've got our wheel backs and wheel retainer clips as well as our rear muffler and exhaust pipes and our two-piece spare tire so again just take a look at how nice the detail is on here not too much to show because this is a smaller parts tree. Some mold marks, but they're in the center and the back, so I wouldn't even worry about them. Just glue this together and then clean up your seam line afterwards, just so that the tire matches pretty perfectly around the outside diameter. Here we have our chrome parts tree for our Ford Lightning. And I do believe there is two actual manifolds on here. Looks like one with four throttle bodies or maybe even, f uh, sorry, two throttle bodies. <coughs> Here we have our chrome parts tree for our Ford Lightning. Now I do believe this parts tree was actually shared among a few different Fords at the time. Because here you can see that clearly there was some wheels inside these four areas which are not here. And then we have these other wheels which are the Lightning ones. Now, the intakes, you're going to have to look in your instructions to make sure you've got the right ones because here's one here. And then on the gray parts tree, we were also looking at a different plenum. Then we have the uh, valve covers here, which are okay. There's our grill, the mirrors, all that stuff is correct for the truck. But then over here, we have another intake assembly. Looks like we have two big throttle bodies on here for this intake which again, you'll have to look at the instructions to make sure you got the right ones. Now, if we turn this over, this is an insert for the tailgate, which I don't think is used on the Lightning either. So again, just make sure you got the right things in the instructions. There's that nice grill. It's really deep and wide in there, so you should be able to get flat black paint into all of this area without a hassle. There's our chrome mirrors. So yeah, you do have to put that inside the housing like Danny was thinking there, because again, it's kind of empty. So with the very edge of your hobby blade, you're gonna have to scrape this little in her inner ridge, pardon me, scrape that clean, Let's clean off the back of the mirror, put a little liquid glue in there, and then put that in there. <laughs> so yeah, overall, a really good chrome parts tree, even if there is a mystery intake setup on this side. But overall, it looks really good. Here we have the clear components for our Ford F-150 Lightning model kit by AMT. We've got our front windshield and the rear glass, which is all molded as one piece here, with the top being actually quite wide. Then here we've got our little lights, and those are the lenses for the lights. There, here's our front lights and side marker lights, as well as a bug deflector, which was an optional piece. And then we've got our rear tail lamps, and this red piece actually goes into the tailgate. Now, I'm not sure if this is on the Lightning or on the other Fords, but again, AMT is just going to mold this as a one piece, so this all came in, both pieces came in, the regular Ford F-150s of the era. And here we have the tires for our Ford F-150. These are Firestones, and they don't really say what they are, what kind of Firestones underneath. It just has Firestone written twice. So again, you could always paint those. They are raised. The tread pattern on here is quite nice again, and these are wonderful solid tires. How many of you remember the recall in 2000, I think it was, for these Firestone tires? Ford had to actually slice all the tires and dispose of them 
And uh, I remember I was working as a detailer at that time, and I remember guys bringing in these and the other guys slicing them with big knives. So, yeah, how many of you remember that? Let us know in the comments down below. Hey everybody, it's Danny the Dog here once again, and here we have our decal sheet. As you can see, there's only five decals on here, really, and you can only use four. But at any rate, there's the script that says lightning, and here's some more. This is a decal for under the hood, and it shows how the serpentine belt all hooks together, just like the real truck. And here we have Ohio Lightning as a license plate, and an Oklahoma YTC 962. Oklahoma! Doo -doo -doo -doo. You know that song. Everybody look it up on Google. Alright, so that's our decals for this model kit. <coughs> <clears throat> well, I really hope you enjoyed that unboxing video from me and Danny the dog on the 1994 Ford F-150 Lightning by AMT Ertl. And if you have built this model kit, we want to know just how much you liked it. Did you enjoy putting it together? Was it quite easy? Did everything fit? Or was it just a nightmare? <laughs> nightmare on Elm Street! Well, let us know down in the comments below. Now. If you want to see what great model kits that we have for sale right now that you can buy from our website, visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca and there you can see all our great cars. And I've got this idea that I want to open up a model car museum that would like showcase my dad's models as well as my own in all these great little settings. So if this sounds really good to you, for as little as $3 a month, just click that join button and we can all make it happen. So until next time everybody, happy model building and we'll see you in the next video.